<laughs> it's a good way to start the show. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Along with my co-host, Sean Francis, I am Brian Altunian, and you are uh, here with another episode of Just Two Dads. Today, our conversation is going to be all about 2022 and the amazing things that are happening. Hope you all had a good holiday and uh, welcome in the new year. So uh, hang with us here for Just Two Dads. All right, we've started the show off. Hey, there she is. Hey, Joe. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Just Two Dads. I am Brian Altini, <laughs> along with Sean Francis. We uh, we're gonna have a hard time getting through today. We uh, welcome you all. If you're catching us on Facebook, uh, please leave us a comment. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, if you're not catching us live on Facebook or any of, of, of our uh, podcast outlets, please catch us on our YouTube channel. There you are. Hey, Ron Johnson. Uh, our YouTube channel, or we are just two dads. And if you're hearing us on WSTX AM radio down the U.S. Virgin Islands, we welcome you. Um, it's been an amazing, uh, amazing holiday season. I think a lot of people are happy to be washing their hands of 2021 and be looking forward to what's happening in 2022. And we're going to be talking about that uh, today along uh, with a few other things. Exciting news happening for us and, uh, and our show this coming year. So without further ado, Sean Francis, how are you, my friend? Ha ah, blessed and full of joy and <laughs> laughter, a little bit of an inside joke just before we went on live. So <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah. um let's go ahead and kind of get right into it. It has been a very interesting and seems like a real um whirlwind of uh past uh two weeks. Uh so we're gonna be touching today on the topics of goal setting for the new year and beyond. How, if at all, does that affect you as a parent or caregiver to one with special needs? And then uh, I know that we happen to drift into the wonderful existence of, you know, it's a wonderful life in our last uh, episode. Um, but um, I think that that carries over again when we talk about the value that each of us has and brings to the lives of others, especially in cases where we, you know, we might not uh, might not realize that. So we're going to talk a bit about those things. So as we get started, I'll, you know, I'll ask you how was uh how were the holidays for you and happy new year uh yeah <clears throat> thank you buddy H happy new year to you i'm i'm excited about this about this year and i think that i for the for me the holidays were kind of uh a bit quiet uh jordan my daughter joe who's often a contributor here on our on our podcast um you know lives out in in upstate new york and my other daughter is in israel this year teaching english um and that just left uh left one child at home so kind of a quiet Fun and quiet, uh, quiet holiday. Spent a few days up in the up in the snow, getting getting new snow uh, up in the Big Bear Mar Mountains near Los Angeles. So, so that was kind of fun. But I spent a lot of time sort of reflecting on the year that's passed. I think the COVID, um, you know, the COVID pandemic still had had a big impact on the holidays and you know limited some of the involvement we had with with a lot of other folks and travel commitments and and whatnot. And so. Um, I would say it was a it was it was a much quieter, not as quiet as last year. Last year was extremely quiet, but much quieter than than normal, <laughs> the normal years. But filled up, filled with uh, you know love and and uh, and reflection for sure. How about you? Good. Would you uh, how did you guys how did you guys spend your day? Spend your holidays? Um, it was quiet for us too. And this is gonna sound weird, but looking at the the year, I realized that I did a minimal amount of actually a minimal amount. There's a bigger gap than there would usually be um, between the amount of giving that I did and the amount that I wanted to do. Um, mm -hmm. Sure. That we could have a whole nother show on that, but it's just, and it, but it hit me as we came upon like Christmas morning and everything. It was just, uh, I, I, I don't know. It was just, but, but I didn't, didn't necessarily like it, but I didn't feel, you know, uh, beat myself up about it or anything like that. But it definitely became part of my plan for not just the year, but going forward. So there's several things that affected uh, my plan. Um, that and the importance of if you love somebody, make sure you let them know. I had, even just before the holidays, I had three people um, that I... I knew one, you know, I met a, you know, just 
met a couple of times, but made a great impact on me that I had been meaning to connect with, um, had not, and each of them passed away. And oh my gosh. That, and that was something that was um, um, really significant. Um, you know, uh, and it just made me stop and think, you know, we constantly live our lives as though um, tomorrow is still somewhat promised. You know, we we tend to act that way, you know, so that, that that's had a bit great impact in what I want to do for um, for the coming year. Um, personally, the simple stuff in terms of just connecting with people and and, uh, and letting them know. And I find myself saying that to people um, more than I did even, the you know, the last year. And if you have to, if you stop and think about that. Just from the standpoint of humanity, you don't have to know someone a whole lot to love them. And it's funny because you, as, as you know, any post that I make on social media, when I end it, um, for the most part, I'll say, if you're reading this, uh, I love you. I do the same thing as we end the show. And yeah. at the same time, that seems like someone who has a fairly, fairly decent amount of consciousness, right? And who's awake or woke, so to speak. But despite that, there is still a tendency to kind of slip. So... Uh, raising your consciousness and making sure that other people know that they matter to you and the impact that they make is um, a never ending process and labor of love. So, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think that uh, we're seeing a lot of that. You know, it's funny because we, we usually reserve the holidays to gather family and all those, you know, spread the love and joy. Um, you and I are a little different because we, we do things a little bit differently than, <laughs> than most men, I think. Yeah, we're, we're, we're willing and, um, you know, committed to saying, I love you to the people around us on a fairly regular basis. Uh, we don't wait for the holidays or a special occasion to say it. So, um, I think that the, again, not to continue to, to refer to the pandemic, but <clears throat> the pandemic has showed us that, you know, things can happen in an instant to your point, you're losing, you, we lose people in our families. We, we know people who have, who have lost people, um, in their families, um, our producer in Hawaii, Sean Hall, who we love dearly, um, has been a huge part of our show since we started doing this. Um, just recently lost a, 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 a grandchild, which is so heart wrenching and so painful to think about. It's one thing to think about losing a child, but another to lose to lose a grandchild. And and uh, Sean Hall, if you're you know, I know you're listening in. We you know again express our love to you and and to your family and know how much we care for you and, and about you and, and uh, you know, just sending our love, our love to you. And, and again, it's sad that oftentimes we have to wait for a tragic uh, situation to, to give us the opportunity to say, I love you. And we're seeing that the pandemic has created opportunity for people to say, I love you more often than, than probably they care to. Um, mm -hmm. But but they shouldn't, we should be saying it all the time. And I always say to end our show with, you know, talking about empathy and love. That is what it's all about at the end of the day. And, um, and we should not be, we should not be uh, shying away from the opportunities to tell people we love you. So just <laughs> for everybody on the call and everybody who's, who's commenting, we love you all. And, uh, and just, and know that that's heartfelt and sincere. And it comes from, you know, place where we'd like to make the world a better place by expressing that love to, to everybody. So, yeah, yeah. And then as our good friend Abel Vasquez put in the chat, you know, give people their flowers while they are alive. Absolutely. And, you know, that's why, you know, when we, as we jump into the goal setting portion of it, for some people that can seem really overwhelming for a lot of people. For me, it can. And then um, what's overwhelming for me is sticking to it. When you when you add the special needs component, depending on what you're um, dealing with in terms of diagnosis or catastrophic injury, that may seem twice as, as difficult. But I would encourage you to peel the layers and step back a little bit and think about the example that we just gave in, in terms of, and for some people, this is a little easier and a little more natural than others. But if you just think about the value that you add to other people and let them know about the value that they add to others and that they may add to you, that's this, that's the, just start right there as a baseline. You know, if you want to lose a certain amount of pounds, you want to grow your business by a certain amount. Um, raise your consciousness, or your spirituality, or get uh, closer with your creator, whatever your, your your faith may be. Those things are great, but the best place, or, and I shouldn't say the best, because I like to try and simply say, here's what I've figured out and continue to learn. Not that either of us has all the answers, but a good place to start 
is by simply asking yourself, how can I give more? How can I impact um, people around me in uh, in a much greater way? And what I found myself doing is, you you know, with friends, men in particular that you that that don't necessarily hear that because again, we've got this you know thing that's up a wall of machismo, so to speak. And even you and I that don't necessarily have that, if you're not like us, we're like-minded. So we exchange those things all the time. All right. Talk yeah. to you later, man. Love you. If you're yeah. speaking to someone that doesn't necessarily receive that way, that's beside the point. Don't determine whether or not you're going to give that or express that based upon how they may receive it. Because the truth of the matter is you're not responsible for how they receive it. You can't control how they receive it. Um, What's more important is that you just put it out there. And that's a good way to start in terms of what you could do different um, for the coming year. So that's one of the things that well, I have in my own plan for the year. That's good. And let me and let me just address that for a second too before sure. we get into the goal setting space for a second. Because we, we had this, we had a, a, a training with a number of our of our colleagues uh, last night, and we were talking about, you know, the fact that when whenever you speak, especially in a group setting, um, you know, a lot of us, a lot of us take this position of like, well, I don't have anything important to say, or nobody's going to get any value out of anything that I say. And the reality is you never really know what impact you have. And so, so of all of the possibilities of, of ways that the comments you make could be taken, right? We tend to focus on, oh, they're not going to think that's a value that we think we focus on the negative, right? As opposed to not really focusing on Somebody can get value out of out of what it is that I'm saying or contributing. It's amazing how little we realize the impact our comments have on other people. And, and many of you may have experienced this, and you can share these in the comments if you want. But but you know, if if you've had people who have come to you and said, you know, you said something to me in a meeting a couple of years ago, or you said something to me, you know, once before that that I took to heart and I decided to go off this different path. If it weren't for you, if it weren't for that comment, I would never have done that. That has happened to me on a number of occasions in our business. It happens a lot because we get people who get to be in front of a room or in front of a group of people and they share their story. And oftentimes way down the line, somebody will say, you know, you told your story. I remember when you got up on stage and you said something and it really hit me and I'm here today because of that comment that you made. When we're up on stage and making those comments, we don't know the impact that's going to have. The point is, is that you want to you you want to make a contribution, no matter what, where you are, by just showing up, right? And by speaking. When I say show up, I don't mean just show up physically. I mean show up full on, right? Full on, full on, as if whatever you say is gonna is going to have a difference in people's lives because it does. We're looking at. You know, people who have commented already today, my daughter, Joe, who always has a huge impact on my life personally, but but Ron Johnson, Ron Johnson, you know, the impact that that Ron has had. Ron and I have have only had one actual direct conversation, but I'm going to tell you the conversations that I have watched Ron have have been impactful for me. Abel Vasquez and I have had conversations where. You know, he said something to me. And by the way, in a couple of years, I'm going to remind him of, of the one conversation. He probably remembers it because he made a he made a, a comment to me that really kind of hit me. Bam, right in that between the shoulder blades. Um, and I needed to hear it at the time. I didn't think I did, but I needed to hear it. And uh, and it had a huge impact on me. Um, so I would say all the conversations that you have with people um, have an impact. Uh, Sean Hall. Uh, has impacted our lives from the day we first met him and continues to. Uh, and obviously my relationship, Abel, you know what I'm talking about. Sean Francis, the very first person I ever met in the business that we do together, Sean Francis was the first person that I met. We had a conversation. And if it weren't for Sean Francis, I'm not sure I would be in the business. Um, if it weren't for his contribution to me that night and our ongoing relationship here in Just Two Dads, I'm not sure that we, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I don't know where we would be. But that's what I'm telling people. You have an impact, and uh, and as as Abel had said before, you know, give people flowers while they're alive, talk to people while they're with you, tell them how much you mean to them, or, or how much they sorry, how much they mean to you, how much they've had an impact on you while they're alive to hear it, and while they're you know while they can appreciate that, and don't hold back. Right when you're in the middle of it, when you're when you're talking to somebody, don't sit back as a, as a wallflower. Make a contribution. Say something of value. It because whether you think it has a value or not, 
I'm telling you, it does. I know, I know it does. So, um, mm -hmm. I, uh, last last thing I'll, I'll say to that, I was, and I'm yeah. sorry, Sean, I'm just, I'm on a ramble no, too. That's okay. I only had one cup of coffee today. Um, <laughs> I was in, I was in Salt Lake City with my daughter Jordan uh, several years ago, and I remember, and this is not a reflection on the on the Mormon Church, so so please don't take it that way. Um, but but when you're in Salt Lake City, you have an opportunity to tour the the church of the of the Mormon uh, tour the, the 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 grounds of the Mormon Church, and um, I remember I remember distinctly um, after we had spent a lot of time we were we were leaving and there was a there was a homeless woman outside the gates of one of the big entrances to the Mormon Church and there were people streaming in and out of of that of that entrance, and I I, I sat there and I watched that and and again i promise not a reflection on 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 the on the church it's, itself or the, or the people but i i walked up to the person to the to the woman i said to her you know in any in any religion where where it's all about con contribution to community you know you always think about people caring for those around them i asked her has anybody stopped and said and talked to you and she said no and you know what's amazing about that they don't have any idea who i am I could be God. I could mm -hmm. be God. And I thought about that and I thought, you know, that would be a, that would be an interesting test for God to have, right? To, to, to take on the embodiment of somebody in need and, and put them in, in front of a place where, where service is provided for those in need and not have anybody address for whatever reason. And again, I promise not a, not a, not a reflection on, on the Mormon church, it could have been a temple. It could have been, it could have been any other, but it could have been a hospital. But you see somebody who's in a, who's in a position, you have no idea who, who the person is that you're walking past in your day-to-day -day life where a simple, how are you today? Happy new year, happy holidays. Some comment could be all the difference in the world that they need to get to their next point. Right. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of the same, the same concept, the idea that, we can make a contribution by a simple connection of our humanity and say hello to somebody or, you know, happy new year or make them feel seen as we talk about all the time, have them feel seen. So Most definitely. Anyway, that was sort of my reflection on, on, on your comment and, and uh, we can jump into goal setting now too, but I would put on my goals for this year to make sure that I have, that I impact as many people as I possibly can and never play small. Yeah, well, it's, I'm actually not done with the topic because of a couple of things you talked about. Okay, and, good. And thinking of that that whole realization, I have a friend, and I'll mention his name here. He's, you know, he's. I don't think he's on social media at all. By the name of Gary Winston here in Los Angeles. And you know, years ago when I first moved back to Los Angeles from um, Minneapolis, I got a job in in customer service for the health insurance company. Um, one day this guy comes in and it's his first day. Well, I was at a club maybe two nights before the century club for those that went clubbing back in the day. I remember him being at the line, talking to somebody getting in at the guest list or whatever have you. So we connected, we became friends and our friendship is one that consists of more quant uh, quality than quantity in terms of the time that we spend together when he left that job, he got a job with an internet uh, company, a company that sold electronic components online. This is in 2000. I got the job there. Um, you know, he's like, hey, they're hiring. It's a growing company, you know. So I came there and got a job in customer service. When I went there and got that job, you know, I met the woman that is now my wife. And much, you know, and we've been married now for, uh, 16 years. And much like you and I trying to figure out, hey, if we didn't happen to be working in financial services, building a business with the same firm or whatever, would we cross paths? Anything is possible, sure, but it's not, it's not likely. And in the case of my wife and I, we may have crossed paths, but it's not likely. And so yeah. if, he, if he didn't do that, Elijah, my son, not only would he not be here, but if I, you and I met anyway, we probably wouldn't. Okay, this is going to be weird now. We probably wouldn't be doing this show if it wasn't for my friend Gary. Because without having Elijah, who was diagnosed with autism at the age of three, how compelled am I to go serve the special needs community? Right, right. So think about That's that. That's crazy. Think That's about crazy. that. That's crazy. 
Think about that. And so the other thing I want to say is just like we we talk about making sure you go out of your way to get over yourself to let people know. Because once you get over yourself, if it feels weird, the feeling that you'll get afterwards is just so rewarding and immeasurable in value. But the, what might be even more difficult is for you to stop and think. I'm speaking that everyone within the sound of my voice. Stop and think about the things that you have done in your own life. Because just like my friend Gary would not think of those things without me mentioning it. Think of the contributions that you've made to other people. And you might find yourself going back to the whole it's a wonderful life reference, right? Where George Bailey wishes he wasn't born and he finds out firsthand the things that exist but would not were it not for him. Yeah. I'm sure if you stop and think for a minute and don't be bashful about it, you'll find a couple things maybe even people that would not exist if you were never here. Because trust me, they're there and they exist. Yeah. 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 And Jordan's, Jordan is uh, commenting, and the same thing, right? Elijah and I made you both who you are today because without us, you wouldn't have the knowledge that you have today. And that's a, that's exactly true. That's mm-hmm. exactly true. It is. Yeah, I, 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 I love that. And, and, and again, we don't know when we're having a casual conversation what the ripple effect is of all of that, right? So yes, uh, we we spent a lot of time two weeks ago talking about it's a wonderful life because there's <laughs> so many amazing stories, so many amazing uh, elements that come out of that movie that's now 75 years old and still is in, as impactful today as it was the day it came out. And so um, I think we're going to carry these <laughs> these things these things and these it's beyond Christmas because here's the other thing too with the holidays we yeah. tend to. It's much like when someone loses a loved one. People come together and they come for that person then. When that person begins the step towards that life that is nothing like the one they knew before because that space is now there and that void is huge, that's when people may be around a little less. So by the same token, the way some people may come together and whether it's a post or they give you know, um, to someone on the corner or they go down to Skid Row as we've done in the past uh, on Christmas yeah. or whatever the case is, just as you give and come together to support people during the holidays, hey, some people are having a hard time. If that's you, know that you're not alone, yada, yada, those things, that matters. But we're now at January 5th, one day after January 4th, my, which was my brother's birthday yesterday. Happy belated birthday to my brother, Ray. Happy Ray. You know, Happy birthday, Ray. that's when it's needed even more because some people have okay they've like okay the holidays are past us i'm i'm done with the depressed time or whatever they're on with (laughs) with the year but you know it's our value is just immeasurable and we can't ever let up on raising our consciousness so with that said getting into the goal well and i think let me say this i think that 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 that's exactly the point it's about level it's about raising your level of consciousness right so it's one thing to just say oh yeah i'm just gonna gonna speak and you know maybe it will land on somebody or be be conscious that the words that you say do have an impact. And so especially as it comes to setting your goals for the year and doing planning for the future, you know, that's why we often tell people, suggest to people and recommend and highly <laughs> promote the idea of, you know, putting down your plans in writing and speaking them into existence, speaking them into the universe, raise the level of consciousness of what it is that you'd like to accomplish raise your own level of consciousness. So it's not accidental. We always, we, we talk about this, I, this concept, um, you know, handed down by our, our mentor, Ed Milet, you know, this reticular activation system, which is your awareness of, of, of the things in your life. And, and we use the example, and I know Tammy's on here as well. And Tammy and I were having this conversation yesterday that, you know, you buy a blue Toyota, you know, whatever, blue Toyota Camry. And then it's weird how many blue Toyota Camrys you see on the road. It's not like everybody went out and bought that blue Toyota Camry the same day you did. Your level of consciousness has been raised for that particular uh, item. And now you see it. Imagine if you raise your consciousness. Yes, living your life on on purpose, Sean, absolutely. Imagine if you put into your plan uh, and raised your level of consciousness around miracles. I don't know. It's a very religious and spiritual theme running through here today, Sean. I don't know what's going mm-hmm. on, but but the idea, <laughs> like, like, right? Spiritual. It's just facts. It's just facts. That's all. <laughs> right. That's all. If you said, you know, I, I, I want to see four miracles today. I want to see four miracles on a daily basis. Imagine how how miraculous your life would appear if you start to level your, raise your level of consciousness around miracles. And by the way, 
How many of you have been in, in, a, in a situation and had a near miss accident on the freeway or, you know, you, you, you walked, you know, walked out and, and crossed somebody and then, you know, they dropped something and spilled, spilled it. It could have spilled on you. Right. And you're like, oh my God, that could have, that could have been me a second earlier, a second later to me, that's a miracle, right? That's, that's, that's somebody looking out at, you know, looking out for you. And, and again, if you're looking for those things that are, that, that could be miraculous, your life is going to look miraculous because you're going to see all those things. So what other things can you create? What other things can you put into your consciousness and can you raise the level to, around you? Is it, you know, manifesting more streams of income? Is it manifesting more, you know, more money in your bank account, uh, better relationships? Is it, you know, stronger, you know, stronger business performance, what, whatever it is, if you can raise your level of consciousness around it, rather than just wait for it to happen ha in happenstance, will it into existence and speak it into existence. And yeah, the, I have not read Einstein's poem on, on miracles, Tammy. So I'd be curious to know, to see what that, what that is. And hope maybe somebody can find it, put a, put it the links somewhere. Um, but uh, yeah, Sean, they, these miracles do happen every day. And that I concept of being grateful for those things around us. I spend, I go to bed every night and put my head on the pillow. And I, before I go to sleep, I say, okay, look, the things that I am grateful for that occurred today. And every morning when I wake up, I'm like, I'm, I am grateful for people in my life, Sean, for you, for experiences, for my children, for, you know, my health. I have, I have avoided this COVID illness the entire two years that it has been around. And I'm, I want to continue to do that. And I'm grateful yep. for that. And for my health being good enough that I've avoided it and that I haven't put myself in a position to be exposed to it. So anyways, a lot of things to be grateful for. And I think you're right, Sean, uh, attitude of gratitude on a, you know, is where we, is where we want to spend our life. So Sean, I've, I've, again, I've taken over our, our goal no. setting, but I think that it's part of goal setting, right? This is yeah, part of is. the goals that we set for the year. It is, it is. And again, so the first thing we talked about is keep it simple, you know, it, it means that maybe you write down three things that you'd like to have take place for the year. Because if you think about it, now more than ever, with technology at our fingertips, so much of what we do is on autopilot. And that can be as much of a good thing as it is bad. I know everybody, and I think I might have you know, given this example before, I know everybody's pulled into their driveway or their parking stall in their apartment or condo building or a park down their street or whatever. And there's a small part of you that is unclear as to how you got from your previous destination to your house because right. it's just you just do it automatic autopilot right? you autopilot. didn't you didn't come close to running anything over you didn't do anything like that right um but you know if you put on autopilot things that um well let me back up we do everything you know but just based on habit and less consciousness we're in, in many ways we're not as conscious we just kind of go about our way. So what that means is that there's little plan made for the day we have. If we don't have a plan that's given for our day, then we surely have less of a plan for our life. And there's a constant battle for our attention that's taking place. Whether you watch MMA, UFC, whatever, boxing, the biggest battle taking place on the planet is the one between the life that you have and the one that you want. And more often than not, the life that we have is getting the skin beat off of it, um, you know, um, or the light that we want, excuse me, is getting the skin beat off of it by the one that we have because we're so habitual in terms of what we do to a fault that we're just not looking ahead. So if we can pick our heads up and get a little more conscious and a little more intentional about what it is that we want to do, there's the start. The next thing is to make sure that the list for the things you want to accomplish maybe in the coming year are just plain and simple. I have been, um, you know, sucked in by the perfect plan. I don't even call it a business plan, a life plan. You know, we've taken a course um, known as living your life on purpose, where you begin by writing out your eulogy. How would you like to be remembered? That was kind of a weird concept for me, but I've done that and had these elaborate plans that are put together and I might stick to them. Maybe, you know, maybe, you know, for a month, yeah, that's even with a shortened version of it. So I've had to really strip down um, the, the the contents of the plan itself to make sure that there's just tiny things to focus on uh, each day. And so, you know, if you're sitting there thinking, I don't even know what I want, just 
to spend a little time in, in you know in, in, in silence. We know a little more than we think. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Sorry, I, I interrupted you there for a second with noise on my That's phone. Okay. But um, um, but yeah, no, I I, I I agree. I think here, I want to throw something up here on the screen, if that's all right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Just to go back to the whole miracles thing, because I think, again, there's only two ways to live your life. Thank you, Sean Hall, for putting this up here. Uh, one is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is though everything is a miracle. I think that's a great, a great way to look at it. And again, it's the life you live and the life that you want to live, right? And the difference between the two is... You know, what, you know, yeah. you know what that's an extension of when you talk about living though as though there are no miracles versus living as though everything is a miracle. That is again the distinction between living our life, as I said before, more childlike versus yes. childish. A child, when we're children, we're as close to perfection as we will ever get, right? When we fall, literally or figuratively, we get right back up, even if we're bloody. We'll sit there and cry and scream, but we'll get right back up. But the yeah. very people who will take a bullet for you will say no, and you'll hear no more often than you hear anything else. And before you know it, you run a little less, you run a little less, maybe you walk. And then what happens is, figuratively speaking, you never run. So what chance do you have of ever flying then, right? So uh, as a child, you believe that anything is possible um, and everything is a miracle. It's okay to be easily amazed. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. I, I I do like that. I do like that concept. You know, um, somebody told me a story a, a while ago that um, you know, as children, it's you know, often children are considered angels, right? Sent down from heaven to families. I think so. Most families would feel that way, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and that that's where. Excuse me. <clears throat> we're closest to God at the early days of our lives, and at the last days of our lives. Um, that's where we, you know, we lose sight of God in between to, for some people, unless you put it in practice and regularly. I love the, I love the way you said that. Right. And so I remembered this, this, this story of this, uh, uh, this, this gal told me that, uh, this, this four-year-old, uh, child that her parents had had a birth and another, a baby brother. And, uh, the four-year-old kept trying to get alone time. I was not going to get through this story without 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 tearing up. And I've told this story probably a hundred times. And I think I tear up every time I tell the story. Um, and so the parents were concerned. Like, why does she want to have alone time with a baby? It doesn't really make, like, I'm concerned. Like, we don't really want, who knows, right? Because sometimes you have sibling rivalry and you're the oldest child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it does things to a baby. But after, and after pressing, you're like, Mom, I really would like to have, like, like some time. I want to have some time alone with the baby. And they, they pressed her and they said, you know, why? Why is it that you want to have time alone with the baby? And her response was, I'll get there. Hold on, I'll get there. Her response was, I am beginning to forget what God is like. And I want a reminder. I want to remember who God is and what God is like. Wow. It's a, it's a powerful thing to think about. You know, that we that we lose sight. Sorry about that. Sorry for getting emotional. I don't know why I get emotional about stuff. I just turned 58 last month and I on everything. I cry at everything. Um, but you know, the concept that we lose focus on what's important in our lives, we lose sight of the things that are meaningful and our relationship to God, whatever God means to you. You know, as we get older and we get caught up in the day to day and the things to do and the things that distract us and the screens in our hands and the, you know, the content that we consume and our, our, our business and our relationship, we forget what we're doing here and why we're here. And again, this goes back to the whole idea of being, you know, mindful of, of miracles around us and, and how do we become, you know, again, God like God created us in in you know in the image of 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 Him. We just happen to occupy a, a human a human body, but the idea that as we as we get older we lose we we do lose sight of what you know of what it's all about. Uh, isn't it amazing how we get reminded as we get closer to the end, and we our final days are you know are are closer than <laughs> than the beginning days. We get we find religion. Is that what they say? You know, as you 
you get older and you maybe you get you get ill or you're able you're not as able to to be as, as mobile and so we get closer to god near the end because you know that's that's when the meaning of life hits us and so i i I think for us, the meaning of life is, you know, is, is the elusive thing. And we keep looking for it out there when we should be looking for it here internally. And then once we find it to share it with as many people as we possibly can. I don't want anybody that's listening to miss sight of that and, and, and mistake um, a spiritual conversation or, um, or just basic facts for a religious one. So you know, you may worship a head of cabbage for all, you know, for all we, <laughs> right. we know. You know? Right. That's taken from an old episode of what's happening. It, it, it's probably <laughs> two people that know about that. But anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter. The idea is something, something greater than yourself. And you know, when you think about it, I'm sorry, because you know how much we can get on tangents. Atheists are almost maybe a misnomer because an atheist has to at least knowledge that the universe or the world is bigger than themselves. So everybody in some way, shape, or form, no matter how great or how small, believes in something greater than themselves. Now, if they have the audacity to not and they believe that they are the greatest thing going, more power to you because you're going to need all you can get. But it's interesting. I had a conversation with a very dear friend of mine earlier today talking about you know, as you know, years ago when I worked in um, uh, uh, I worked in mortgages on a business trip, I happened to meet um, Sam Jones, who uh, played for the legendary Boston Celtics under Red Auerbach, uh, retired with ten rings, and we just struck up a conversation. We had went to this, we went to the same prep school in North Carolina, even though we weren't there at the same time, obviously. He says, oh, we should keep in touch. This is, you know, 20 years ago. And we kept in touch over time. I reached out to him on Christmas Day. He was, his son told me he was relaxing. I said, oh, let him relax. I'll give him a call the next day. I didn't call the next day. Three days later, he was gone. He was the, he was 88 years old. And I just so cherish conversations with him, you know, and it's funny. I love the way you said that and talking, talking about remembering where God is, so to speak, because my some of my greatest conversations are either with children or with older people, you know. And um, you know what what I love about what we do here is um, what I, I at least hope are sensible and valuable tangents that that we <laughs> that we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's true. It, it 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 is true. Those those conversations. And as we get older, you know, somebody I I, I, I read another another quote. It would, that was, you know, as I get older, my eyesight gets worse, but my ability to see through uh, other people's BS increases. And again, in a way, our while our eyesight to read has, you know, minim, diminished, our ability to see the truth in, uh, improves. I think, um, yeah. or at least our own our own truth. Um, so, anyways, I thank you for indulging on that that part of the, the conversation for. For us and for, for folks to know, you know, as we've looked at our goals and what we're doing for this year, we have personal goals, we have family goals, we have, you know, the, the basics, the faith, family, finances, fitness, we all have goals in that area as it relates to Just Two Dads and what we're doing. Somebody answered that phone um, as it relates to what we're doing um, with, our, with our show. Uh, we have a lot of great things that are actually happening in 2022. Um, we are, uh, part of a new launch of a, of a new empowered content, um, television channel, uh, that'll be, that's on Roku. You can find it now. If you have, if you happen to have Roku, it's called empower media. Um, just two dads is going to be a regular show on, on, on that, um, on that channel. Sean and I have spent some time yesterday talking with, a with an advisor and a consultant about, about the book that we are planning on writing. And so this year, Sean and I are going to be, are going to be co-authoring a book talking about, you know, dads of special needs families and, and opening that conversation to a much broader, broader audience. So we're looking forward to, you know, to getting our, our, our thoughts down on paper and, and um, being able to share with that, you know, share with the world, the idea of, of what it means to be a, to be a father of a special needs child and, and the opportunities that that opens up. We're going to launch a number of 
of events that we want to do. We did a summit last fall um, that was very well received. We're definitely going to do a dad focused summit this year as one of at least two summits that we do. And then the world of of uh, financial services that we do professionally geared around special needs families, we are going to have uh, we're going to be doing regular um, presentations on how to prepare your family financially um, and your special needs family member as well uh, in that in that in that financial planning process and how to put your family in a better financial uh, overall financial position. Um, I miss some stuff though, Sean, right? Those are the, some of the basic big things that we're going to do this year in 2022. Is there other goals that we've that's got? The, yeah, that's the, those, those are the basics. Some of the other stuff is just too big to even talk about. <laughs> <laughs> These are big stuff too. The things we're talking about yeah. now are, are, are big and, and, and we've got, we've got more. Um, the bottom line is what we, what we've committed to doing with our show here is to, is to create an, app, an opportunity for people to, uh, to get engaged in the conversation. I, I'd say that, and of course, the last four or five episodes, we haven't had a guest on. It's just been Sean and I talking to each other, just two dads. Um, but we really are intended to, are intending to, and and putting in, excuse me, putting into practice um, the idea of of reaching as many, as many dads uh, as we possibly can and opening that conversation. Um, Sean Hall, definitely a part of that conversation as well. Um, we really are three dads here in, in this, in this, you know, in, in this organized set of episodes, but we want to, we want to reach as many as possible and engage in conversation in a more meaningful way and make sure that we've got platforms and forums and opportunities for people to hear information, to get some access to information. You know, a lot of dads have different, different ways that they communicate with each other, different ways that they communicate with their spouses and their children. And when it comes to the topic of special needs, as we've seen ourselves, we have people who are very high profile positions and don't often take advantage of their position and even talk about special needs children. We have found many folks that have a high profile that that have children on the you know, that that have some form of medical complexity or or a special need or some sort of some sort of issue and they don't talk about it. And and whatever the reason, stigma or embarrassment or shame or whatever, take on it. And we've taken, we've all taken on some element of that, but we want to change that conversation. And we want to give people an opportunity to, to, you know, to speak out and participate in that conversation. We all are going to be members of the special needs community. At some point in our life, we are going right. to, be, we're going to need help. We're going to need additional accommodations. We're going to need some support and and was, wouldn't it be great to know that when we when we enter that that stage of our lives, that there's a network, there's a support system, there's a platform where we can get the help that we all need. So we we don't want to any, deny it. Yeah. And so, before anybody stops and thinks about okay, what that means, don't limit that to oh, we're all going to get old, because between now and that, uh, you may have an injury that makes you a member of that community permanently you can become a member of that community temporarily but the other thing that happens if you live long enough is that somebody you know and care about if they're not a member of that community yet then they become a then then they will and so you'll be a member by proxy so you know it, it, it it's it's part of life yeah at some point you've got to buy clothes right you're gonna be part of the closed <laughs> you're part of the closed you know uh <laughs> Met, you know, a group of people who, who walk around the face of the earth. So you've got to think about, well, I should probably buy a shirt and some pants. At some point, you're going to have to buy clothing, right? It's not like you're going to walk around naked your whole life. So at some point, you're going to become a member of the special needs community. Again, as Sean said, either directly or by proxy. Um, so having the opportunity to begin, you know, talking about this and be open about it and remove the stigma and remove the, you know, the, the, in, the personally, uh, you know, established limitations um, to that conversation is what our overall goal is. We want people to be engaged in the conversation. That's why we love when people communicate, when they engage in the, in the conversation here with us on, on live on Facebook or after the fact on YouTube or, you know, reach out to us via email. By the way, you can get us at we are just two dads at gmail.com. Pretty easy. We are just two dads. We read those every day. Um, and uh, we want to we want to engage in the conversation. We want this to be an ongoing uh, opportunity for people to learn, grow, share, um, be educated, enlightened, sometimes entertained. You can laugh at Sean and I crying at, you know, things that we, that we bring up. Um, uh, <laughs> but, but because, the, you know, it's life. That's just what life is all about. Let's, you know, it's, again, it's all of us getting closer to our, 
truth and to our, you know, to our God, uh, whatever that means for each of us, get close to, to what, you know, what's, what we're up to in the world, because as Sean says frequently, tomorrow is not promised to any of us. So, you know, the whole idea of YOLO, right? You gotta, you gotta live life hard, live, live it as if it's, as if it ends tomorrow. Um, what would you do differently if you're, if you knew that you had a time limit on your life and there was a definitive time limit, what would you do differently? Um, the interesting thing about that is we all do have a time limit. We just don't know what the definitive amount of time there is. So, you know, let's operate as if, as if it's, you know, as if it is shorter, shorter than we think, what would you do differently today? Would you still work in that job that you hate? If you knew that you only had a limited amount of time, would you be in the relationship? And I don't want to ruin anybody's relationship, but would you be in the relationship that is, that is disempowering or harmful or, you know, short of, of, of the perfect relationship that you've always dreamed of? Would you remain in that if you knew that you only had a limited amount of time? Would you, would you still continue to hoard money as opposed to, you know, having the experiences in your life that you've always sought if you only had a limited amount of time? This is all part of your goal setting. You know, as you set your goals for the year, you know, if you look at it like, well, I've got 12 months, like you don't plan everything to happen in October, November, December. You want to plan out your whole year. You don't want to run your life as if you only have the last three months to live it. You want to run, you want to plan your year as if you have the entire 12 month period of time to live that life. The same yeah. is true on an amount of years, right? I'm going to, um, you know, we, we're not getting paid for this. The authors have no idea that this is being done. I just happen to love the concept behind it. And yeah. so I've been using it for my plan. I've been using for years now the, the, the concepts behind think and grow rich this year. What I'm adding as a little bit of a tweak is the 12 week year. Right. And yep. the authors are uh, Brian Moran and Michael uh, Lennington. And what it says is, you know, I got the book because I like what it says. The 12 week year, get more done in 12 weeks than others do in 12 months. Okay. But what I didn't realize till I got the book is that, what they're doing is turning on a year as opposed to 12 months. The year is 12 weeks. So you're thinking of a year in terms of weeks as opposed to months. So then what happens is you're breaking everything down into smaller bite-sized segments. And you're also moving away the stuff that doesn't serve and can be a distraction. Now, if you're a parent or a caregiver to a woman with special needs, that can be, and, and I, I don't mean to make light of or take for granted anybody's situation, but that can be either a great benefit or um, a plus for us, depending yeah. on how we look at things. Um, because if you realize, if you if you strip away the um, you know the, the stuff that doesn't serve you and the distractions, you can get a lot more done in a shorter period of time. And just being transparent, I'm an easily distracted individual. Very, very <laughs> what? Huh? Yeah, what? Squirrel. Very, very squirrel. Yeah. Shiny you object. And I both. You can my nickname could be squirrel shiny object. I mean, that's just me, right? So <laughs> I I have to just be real and stay on that task. Another one of the many reasons why I love my wife, because she'll just like she's real with me. She'll let me know. It's like uh, you're looking the other way. I was like, oh yeah, it's right, right here, right, right in front of me. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so um, those things they, they work and they help. And as we you know wind down to our last couple of minutes, I think a good thing to talk about, Brian. You're the one that brought this up to me, so we're familiar with. We're talking about plans and everything. Um, looking at your dollars, how you earn them and everything, that's always part of somebody's plan, just as much as weight loss or anything else. We're in the midst of uh, what has been called the great resignation, right? So there are a lot of people that, and we're talking about resignation, not getting fired. There's a lot of people that, as a result of the pandemic, knowing the fragility of life, the fact that they don't have endless time, have left jobs that they don't like or that don't serve what their ultimate goal is. And as right. you mentioned, Brian, that's what we've seen a lot of. What has now begun is that there are people that are now leaving jobs that they like. In other words, they like the work, but it still isn't in alignment with what it is they ultimately really want to do. And that's becoming an even um, an even greater phenomenon right now. Yeah. They, they call it the great resignation, the great quit, the great, um, uh, well, that it doesn't matter what they call it now. What's, what we're seeing is in record, record numbers. You can look up, you know, Google the great resignation. You'll see how many articles have been written in the press lately about this massive 
um, uh, exodus. retreat. <laughs> yeah, an exodus from the established nine to five corporate world workplace. Um, in fact, there was there was one um, again an, an NPR uh, an NPR well known NPR uh, employee face a face on on NPR that has just resigned as well because. Well, I don't know her reasons for it. I haven't read the whole article, honestly. But the idea is that she could go start her own thing. And I think that that's what's happening is that people are, are realizing now that that they have choice. They have choice in the matter. They have choice in the way they live. They have choice in the way they earn. They have choice in the way they work. Um, where before the lack of choice is really, it was really, you know, that was just a con man-made construct. The idea, well, I can't, I can't. I don't want to go start my own thing. You know, I'm relying on my health benefits or my, you know, retirement benefits for my, for my employer, by the way, that's all changing. How employers are, are, are looking at, in fact, if you, if I don't know if you've saw today, Amazon is changing the way they're giving their employees stock options because they've had this mass exodus of employees leaving Amazon. And so mm -hmm. how retirement plans are handled how health benefits are handled by employers, that is all going to shift. That is all going to change. In some way, it's in response to the great resignation, but in others, it's just to maintain their, 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 their bottom lines. And so the relationship between an employee and an employer is, is, in, a, is in flux. And as people recognize that and realize that and understand limitations of their concept of, you know, what it means to, to have a job and have an income stream, what they're seeing is that there's opportunity for other ways of earning money, earning a living, and what that all and what that all means. Uh, there are people that are making a and lot of money in their own businesses, starting their own thing, impacting the world in a completely different place than they were if they were working a nine to five job. You were going to say something, right? And, right. and here, here's the thing that's interesting. One of the best examples of how companies in the traditional models are being affected by the manner in which they incentivize or pay employees is look at uh, something like uh, gratuity or tipping, right? Now, when you go to just a sandwich shop and you're, you know, you've made the order, you've driven there, you're getting ready to pay. They're giving you the option as to whether you want to tip 10, 15 or 25%. You know, there's some level of service that's given, but it's not like somebody's waiting on you at a table. I saw a, a write-up yesterday about some TikToker that went through a drive-thru at a burger place and was asked by the person at the drive-thru, how much would you like to tip? Isn't that crazy? Okay. Never heard of that before. So that's just an indication of, you know, again, the challenges that traditional companies are, you know, are, are, are finding. But for the person who's trying to figure out what it is that they want to do, you know, this is not meant to be a shameless plug for, you know, our business, but we provide those uh, those solutions. And what's happening is, you know, again, we talked about this before as a special needs caregiver, you know, maybe there's something that you do or a skill that you have that provides a solution to a very common problem. What the pandemic has done is it, it's, it's shifted mindset um, in terms of priorities, but it's also created uh, a spotlight on a bunch of different problems that people can offer solutions to. Um, there's different ways to go out there we do that. And there's, and there's non-traditional ways as an independent contractor, which is so many of those out there now, to, that can fill the gap while you figure out, well, what is it that I want to create as my solution to a common problem to people so that I can earn a profit versus a wage and add value to the lives of other people? That's something that is out there no matter where you are. For sure. And not to give anybody here uh, tax advice. So let me just say this. The 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 government has has clearly laid out those things through the tax code of what they of what they find advantageous and you know the government really uh rewards the wealthy as you know but they want you to uh because think about where you get tax breaks you get tax if you're married if you have children if you own a house if you give to charity and if you have a business so the the biggest tax breaks come from those particular areas with the point being that you know starting your own business or having your own business provides some tax advantages that uh, that being a W two you know employee uh, worker doesn't 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 give you so things to look at in the future as you're planning where you want to be what you want to do and the idea that this great resignation is in play um, you know first of all we're always looking for people who who are looking for
for opportunities to impact the special needs community um, and in the areas of, of finance. Uh, but, you know, put on your plan for your for this year, you know, what goals you'd like to to accomplish. Maybe that is starting your own business. Maybe that's having multiple lines of revenue or income. Um, you know, whatever that is for you, speak it into existence. Read it a couple times a day. Read it with passion and, uh, you know, and see what happens when your reticular activation system gets activated and, and see what happens around you. Oppor when you decide that you want to do something different, new, on your own, start your own business, you'll be amazed how many opportunities present themselves to you. So as we as we kind of wrap up this, this show, let, let, let's do that. We only have a few minutes left. So um, hopefully this was a, a meaningful conversation for some of you. Um, well, I hope you got some, I hope everybody got something out of it. Um, we are going to have a guest, uh, where we're going to have guests lined up for, for many of our shows this, uh, this year. Um, but so we hope that you'll come back and watch us on Facebook live or catch us on our YouTube channel, or again, on, uh, podcast outlets or WSTX AM radio to all of our folks that listen in for everybody that has contributed today. Thank you very much. Um, we know that, um, that, uh, a lot of options and listening to, you know, listening to podcasts and watching podcasts. We thank you for giving us a slice of your day um, to, to be with us. We're just two dads having a conversation about the things that are important to us in life. Um, as I always say at the end of every show, empathy and love needed more now than any time. Um, be empathetic about the, about the people that you encounter in situations that you see. You don't know what anybody's story is. Have some empathy as you look in and, and what there's. You may not have an understanding but be empathetic. And if you look through the world, through the lenses of, of love, the world will be a better place. Um, that's at the end of the day, what it's all about, right? Love makes the world go round. We need more of it now more than ever. Um, so hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll share that with, with the folks around you. Jordan, I love you. Thank you for being on our show as always. And Sean, I'll throw it to you to close us out. Sean Hall, thank you very much again for being a partner in, a, in, in this game with us. I, we failed to mention that. So. Sean Francis. Yes. Uh, I am eternally grateful. Thank you for everybody that's uh, that's tuned in. You know, I've been looking at, I was saying earlier, you get so busy doing what you do that you kind of forget the impact that you may have and maybe what you've accomplished. I've looked at some, um, uh, some podcasts out there that are of really good quality. I've been doing a lot of research on, if you haven't been able to tell already, uh, we – fly a little bit more by the seat of our pants than we'd like to um a lot more improved since you know we first started so it's a work in progress in terms of getting uh, better and and uh, figuring out how to tweak and uh, make the best production that we possibly can with the show and there's some good looking things out there that don't have as many of the you know the episodes uh you know that we do and so i don't take for granted neither one of us do the time that anyone takes to um, to join us and uh, and hear what we have to say. Uh, so, you know, I want to thank you for that. But I also want to encourage you um, to speak out and reach out to us. Again, we're at we are just two dads at gmail.com, as well as the comment section, our YouTube channel, and our Facebook page. Because as much as we appreciate you tuning in to hear what we have to say, we're just as interested in knowing what it is that you have to say. And we want to talk 100%. about the things that are important to you. So, um, yeah. I want to make sure that, you know, we thank everyone. Um, that has taken the time to tune in and um, I can, I want to make sure that I thank uh, the women in my life without whom I wouldn't be here. That's my amazing wife, Laura, and my mom, Jan, and to everyone else, if you're watching this, we love you. Thanks everybody. Catch you next week. Another episode of just two dads. Thank you for being here.